Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Demon Wind. It's a Chinook smash. Oh yeah. The Demon Wind will be coming out of your ass after. <laughs> More than Demon Wind coming out of your ass after. Today we're going to bring to you 1984's Mutant, or also known as Night Shadows. This movie started to be directed by Mark Rossman, who did House on Sorority Row, which we did. We covered that one. Click the link above. John Bud Cardos actually did direct this whole movie, and he did Kingdom of the Spiders, which we featured. You can click the link above. This movie stars Wings Hauser. What kind of <laughs> name is Wings? Uh, it's, it's an odd name, that's for sure. Maybe he flew out of the womb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> super easy delivery. He's in tons and tons of stuff, but I want to mention that he was in Kung Fu The Legend Continues as Kane's evil brother, Damon. <laughs> Of course, Damon is yeah. his name. <laughs> no originality there. Bo Hopkins is also in this movie. He's in tons of notable movies. Midnight Express, The Wild Bunch, and American Graffiti. Lee Montgomery is also in this, and he's in another movie we covered, Burnt Offerings with Oliver Reed. He's in another horror movie called Dead of Night. So this movie starts out with this old man in this huge house, and he goes into the basement, I guess, looking for stuff. We see this hand grab his face, and there's all this steam that comes off his face. He gets all boiled up. Okay, hold on. I don't like this open shirt thing. I think I'm gonna <laughs> do it from the beginning. I think it's too much. You don't have to do it from the beginning. Just close it up. We get introduced to Josh and Mike, and they're both brothers, and they're on vacation. Josh starts joking around, starts taking his hands off the steering wheel, and the, the car kind of veers off into the opposite lane. And they look back, and there's a truck right in the way, and they just narrowly avoid it. All of a sudden, what hits them from behind is that truck that they narrowly missed, and it's a bunch of hillbillies with this woman in there, too. <laughs> yeah. This woman hillbilly smashing into the side of their car, ramming throwing, it, yeah, yeah, ramming it, throwing beer bottles. Hey, city boy, come on! You want to learn how to drive, city boy? <laughs> yeah. They end up running Josh and Mike right off the road into this creek. Josh and Mike end up thumbing it and they happen upon this male guy who stops in his pickup truck and he's got like the bandana around yeah. his throat and he's all chewing on that cigar <laughs> <laughs> telling him oh yeah i hunt all kinds of things aliens and perverts <laughs> what? Like, what the fuck he drops him off at the outskirts of town so as josh and mike make their way into town they stumble upon this drunken bum who's made his way out of the bar and he's all steamed up too, and he's dead. They get to the bar to try and call the cops, and they run into those fucking hillbillies. They kind of get into this huge fucking bar fight, and the sheriff breaks him up. They tell the sheriff, well, we found this guy behind those buildings dead. They go over to investigate, and the bum actually turns around, and it's not the same guy. He's, he's all just some piss tank. <laughs> he's always <laughs> passed out. They do see some of this weird yellow ooze type shit that's been left on the ground. And the sheriff goes and collects some of it. Meanwhile, the sheriff tells them, well, you guys can stay in this house where they have a bed and breakfast. No, we don't have too many people staying here now. Mike hears some weird sounds outside of his room, right? And the doorknob is kind of jiggling. And something grabs him and drags him under. And you hear all that steaming. The sheriff drops off that vial to the doctor. In the morning, Josh wakes up and he notices that his brother's gone. He goes back to that town bar. At the bar, Josh runs into the bartender. Holly, willing to help him look for his brother. She just also happens to be a school teacher too. She got <laughs> yeah. two, had two jobs, two very demanding jobs, mind you. Yeah. So she's got to go to the schoolhouse and they run into this kid, Billy, who's at the schoolhouse all by himself. Yeah, yeah, he's all crying and, and everything. My parents don't want me. Josh goes in the basement to look for his brother and this 
corpse falls from the rafters and it's this little girl who's all boiled up and steaming again. <laughs> and who happens to be down there too? I guess he's like the caretaker or something. One of those fucking hillbillies from before. So it's the third time he's run into this hillbilly guy. And they get in this big fight with these pipes. These, <laughs> instead of like a sword fight, it's like a iron pipe fight. Knocks that one pipe open, all that steam goes in that guy's face. Ah! <laughs> Josh gets away. And the hillbilly blames the, the death of the little girl on Josh. So the sheriff has to find out what the hell's going on here. There's dead bodies popping up. That's a small town. You got this outsider who's causing a ruckus. He doesn't really know what to believe. Not to mention this weird ooze shit that he's been finding. Josh stows away in Holly's car. Oh, he's in this pain. And then he just wakes up in the doctor's office. The doctor tells him he's got chemical burns where the girl landed on him. So she burnt him just by touching him. Holly tells Josh there's this new chemical plant that just opened up. They go visit the chemical plant, people dumping all this weird yellow sludge into the water supply. And, and that Mel guy is all there yeah. running it too. Yeah. They end up getting some big fight with all the workers and everything, and it <laughs> yeah. pushes him in all that <laughs> yellow shit. And yeah. Holly comes to the car, and I like how he just jumps in half into the car with his legs hanging out. Holly remembers that Billy is at the school still, so she needs to go make sure he's okay. Josh goes to the bed and breakfast because he found something really odd about the old woman and her daughter had gone missing. Holly finds Billy in the bathroom. He's all crying. He's like, oh, I'm glad you're not one of them. All these like mutant people start storming the bathroom. They go hide in the stall. Josh goes into the basement of the bed and breakfast and finds a bunch of bodies and mutants are attacking him. That's where we're gonna end the plot. If you wanna see how the hell Josh get out of his situation, how Holly is gonna get out of hers, and what the sheriff is gonna do about all this, watch Mutant. <laughs> so the first thing that is noticeable with this movie are the characters. Right away, we get introduced to Josh and Mike, two very strong leads in the whole yeah, movie. They're very different. The dynamic between the two is really good, you know. Josh is the older brother, telling Mike to loosen up, have some fun. Yeah. Mike's a bit of a tight ass. For some reason, walking around with the shirt open the whole goddamn <laughs> movie until he dies. Yeah. His shirt's like this. <laughs> exactly. Those hillbillies, right, in the truck, yeah. and then in town, in that yeah. bar, and then throughout the whole movie, they're terrorizing these city boys. Keep running into those hillbillies. <laughs> exactly. and they're another set of, you know, a great characters. Like, you don't know their names, you just know them as the gang of hillbillies. Exactly. But they're very memorable. Yeah. Especially that leader guy. The sheriff is a dynamic character, too, and I, I like the way they f sort of flesh out the sheriff's character. You don't learn much from the sheriff himself. It's right. everybody around him right. that he runs into that sort of say the odd thing. He alludes to the sheriff's backstory. Yeah, right? like he was a big city cop, but now he's a small town sheriff. But he's got a drinking problem. He used to have a relationship with the doctor. She bites the bullet. And he finds that tape recorder and he plays it and listens to her being killed by the mutants. Feel for him, right? His character is fleshed out from nothing that he's done himself. He's a really good, compassionate hard ass. The music in this movie is really good too. And I noticed right off the bat, before any story unfolded, the music hooked me in before anything else did. Right. And it's done by Richard Band. Yeah. <laughs> did the music for The House on Sorority Row, which we just covered. The movie is a huge commentary on pollution, right? Which is which was huge in like the very late 70s and getting into the 80s, right? Yeah. You got the Toxic Avenger and stuff like that. Yeah. Pollution was enormous in the 80s and this takes full advantage of that and it turns people into monsters. The mutants, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because of it. And it's kind of neat, it's a different take on this whole zombie thing, because they're not zombies, they're not the living dead, but they're zombie-ish. These people touch you and yeah, they steam you to death. Steam you with these <laughs> steam hands or whatever. <laughs> Steamed hams. <laughs> That brings us to the effects, too. The steam! Yeah. The steam is cool! Yeah. These mutants have a touch that kills. Burn through the glass. That's a really cool effect. And they they're... break, you know, they bust the glass up. It's yeah. a good effect, too. It works really well. A lot of fog in this, which I love movies with lots of fog, and it makes sense because these people are hot and they're steaming, so it's not like there's fog for no reason. Yeah. 
the fog is kind of the steam from them. And the lighting again is great. Like you mentioned, uh, a lot of the lighting is from things in the surrounding, you know, the, the headlights. Scenes aren't just lit for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pacing for this movie is really good too because there's not only a lot of action, but in between the action spots, there's a lot of good character building and storytelling. In the beginning, with that big crazy car chase on the highway when they're ramming them, yeah. like, it's a great action scene, but then it gets more into character building. And then another good action scene, the bar fight, which great. is pretty crazy. More character building, and then there's more action yet. The action sequences are great, like when the hordes of the zombies throws you a lot of curveballs, right? How are they gonna get out of these situations? You're completely swarmed, there's no way out. They put them in the impossible situations. And, and that happens more than once, and like, and the way they get out is like, ah, I didn't see that. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I like how they don't exactly show it right away too, yeah. right? And then they show the solution just a little bit yeah. after. Tons of curveballs from the title of the movie called Mutant. I expect there to be one mutant. Mm -hmm. And then no, there's multiple mutants fooling you. You think it's gonna go one way and it goes a different way, which is good. It makes for a good fun movie. Yeah, exactly. It always keeps you on your toes, yeah. this movie. I don't like stuff that's cookie cutter. You can see it coming from a mile away. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah they, they, they got me there. Yeah, this one, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because this one, you can see the cookie cutter coming and then it veers off. Yeah. It's like, oh, holy shit. Totally, yeah. yeah. Didn't see that one coming. The one thing I didn't like about this movie, and I didn't notice until near the end where shit really hits the fan, Polly is freaking out and she's like hysterical and she becomes like the falling down catatonic. Yeah, kinda. it's like, oh, okay, like that's too archaic of a stereotype. For it didn't help the movie that she was so bumbling and hysterical. Oh, I can't go on, I can't. It's yeah. Like, no, like, it's those days are over. You know, it's the 80s, it's time for the strong female lead who exactly. can handle herself. It would have been nice if she got more uh, courageous than Josh, yeah. actually. Or even on the same level. Yeah, on the same level, level would be right. fine, too. Yeah, but no, she becomes, she kind of just melts down and becomes useless, which ah, I could have done without that. It takes a zombie, not genre, but the zombie idea with hordes and people who come get you, but kind of switches it around. Yeah. It's it got that zombie feel, but it's not a zombie movie. Yeah, and it happens in a small town where it seems like there's still no escape. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. it's an isolated incident. It's not the whole world is ending. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, shit sitting in the fan in the small town. It's got everything that a good horror movie should have. Yeah, and it puts you on the edge of your seat like it should. You're always wondering, how are they going to get out? <laughs> and why is this happening, yeah. right? So, until next time, keep drinking and watch mutant <laughs> and get all steamed <laughs> <Yeah>. up <laughs>